Well, hello, boys and girls. Hi. What a wonderful day it is today in our money-based economy. Well, sit back and relax and get ready for the guy who's about to ruin everything. I'm puzzled. Uh, are you really seriously suggesting that Jesus Christ was a mushroom? Wait. Jesus was a mushroom, Roberts. Yes. You are dealing with a, a secret cult, a secret society. Welcome to Waning Interest. Here we go. Welcome, welcome to the Waning Interest Podcast, number 12, May 8th, 2019. Woohoo, the smallest click on the internet. That's us. Home of the whips. Thank you. That's us. The Waning Interest Podcast Pack. I can't wait to do merch. Got some ideas for some t-shirts. The Jester of Second Place. That's another one. I think I'm going to get that tattooed on my buttocks. No, that, that's silly. The buttocks. That's not the spot for it. Definitely should be a tramp stamp. All right, put that on the calendar. That was Joe Cruz you heard on the open, cruzvo.com. Uh, the link should be in the description everywhere. If you're a podcaster or if you do something else, and if you don't want me as a voice guy, then... I suggest you contact Mr. Cruz. He'll be happy to take your inquiry. But you have to be careful. Because he's kind of on the nice side. He's really annoying in that Accommodating sort of way. Total pain in the ass. So hit Joe. Cruisevo.com Our email here. Waning interest podcast at gmail.com Waning with a Y. You knew that. At some point, once I get a decent stack of emails that are decent, enough of the dick pics, okay? I'll thumb through them like I'm reading the news. So, wherever you're listening to us, it could be iTunes, it could be Stitcher, YouTube, TuneIn, Google Play, Laughable. No, uh, no idea about Spotify. I did the thing you're supposed to do, but I have not heard anything. And then I did a search, didn't see anything. But I, one thing, I refuse to download that shit. I'm not an app person. I'm on the old side of that track. I don't do a lot of apps. What do I have for an app? I have Twitter. Besides the apps that normally that just come with your phone, I have Twitter uh, and WhatsApp. Just for people that don't live in this country that I am friends with, so I can talk to them. That's it. I got no Bumble. I got no Tinder. I got no none of that stuff. Well, Bumble. Well, Bumble and Tinder, I can't even have on my phone because my phone's too old. They won't take it no more. I could do plenty of fish or 
or uh, what's that other one? Plenty of fish and what's that other of the of the um oh man I see the logo but I can't say the name it's one of those I always forget the name plenty of fish and oh man now I gotta look it up it was Bumble and Tinder of course that well when it came to the when it was just the websites. When it was Match.com, um, Plenty of Fish, this one that I'm trying to remember. What was that other one? There was Match, Plenty of Fish, the one I'm trying to think of, and OK Cupid is the one I'm trying to think of that I always forget. But there was another one along with Match. There was the, the two big ones. Oh, that eHarmony shit. I never did that. But anyway, I could do OK Cupid or Plenty, but I'm not. I fuck that. Shit. I'm so tired of that stuff. And you know, there are not many women that like to hear my side of the shit that I say about Manson or Jesus was a mushroom. <laughs> That's how I get out of it when I know a date's not going well. Like, this is nothing. Um, how do I get out of this as quick as possible? Did I ever tell you Jesus was a mushroom? The looks that I get, it's, it's like, um, you see True Romance, James Gandolfini before we knew who he was. He's the guy that beats the shit out of Patricia Arquette before she kills his ass. And after he gives her a bit of a beating and he's sitting over her and he's just kind of contemplating and talking about, you know, just thinking about how he's done, gone through stuff. And he's telling her about people that he's killed. And he says, I threw up on the first one. You believe that? Now I just do it to watch their expression change. That's kind of how I feel about the Jesus was a mushroom stuff. And the Manson stuff a little bit. Just to see their, just to watch the expression change on their face. By the way, if you haven't seen True Romance, you better see it. And if you haven't seen it in a while, it's good enough good enough for another revisit. I can't tell you how many times I've watched that movie. It used to be my date movie back in the 90s. What an idiot. Patreon.com forward slash waning interest. You could be a patron for as little as two bucks a month, but you gotta tell your loaded friends to do more. Just for you and your neighbors and my weed dispensary. Because again, I'm basically paying for promotion being on a bunch of those uh, podcast players where they play ads and I don't get squat. I don't get anything except for the Patreon. And I don't have many patrons just yet. I haven't even been doing this a month yet. It's only been three weeks. And man, self-promotion sucks. I've always hated it. But at least I think I'm putting out a uh, an enjoyable product, I would suppose. At least the promos are funny for sure. But I think I'm goofy enough. I think I'm witty enough. I think I'm slow enough. I think I'm dry enough. If 
I tell certain stories, I'll definitely be wet enough. And right now, I'm trying to figure out if I've milked this as much as I can. Yeah, I think I'm done. Twitter, Wayne Roberts 811. Because I didn't want 911. You know what I do want? I've always wanted to have a cover band and play basically like have a cover band and call it the B-sides. If somebody hasn't already done it, I don't know. But like back in the day, it was the B-side. The, you know, the song that wasn't a single. It wasn't released as a single, but was on the album. Sometimes wasn't even on the album. Of whatever band. And it's usually when, you know, with the albums that I love, that I still listen to, most of the songs that I gravitate most to, the ones that I like the most, are the songs that weren't singles. I'm trying to think of an example. I'm still trying. Like Guns N' Roses. You know, uh, Out to Get Me is, I don't, is, I don't know if that's my favorite song on the album, but it's definitely, if it's not the, my favorite song on the album, it's, it's the second. I mean, Paradise City was a single. And that song is just so perfect. I can't help it. That being my favorite. But Out to Get Me wasn't a single. Um, I mean, look at Metallica. I mean, I was a Metallica fan before they were on the radio. So they never really had any singles. I knew them from... Older folk in school, when I, was at my, when I was in middle school, seventh or eighth grade, when I started seeing Metallica shirts and Slayer. And I never really got into Slayer. No offense to them, don't take anything away from them. I just didn't, I just never really got into them. But it took a while with Metallica. I remember the first time I heard Metallica, I was scared. Scared the shit out of me. Stuff was heavy. I was coming from Kenny Rogers and Eddie Rabbit, man. You know what I'm saying? And Chicago and the Doobie Brothers. Christopher Cross. My dad was... Wow, what an unbelievable influence our parents are, aren't they? Isn't, aren't they? Aren't they? Isn't that weird, huh? But anyway, I've always wanted to do a cover band with a, and, and, only, and basically do B-sides or a cover band of music that, nobody, that, that isn't really popular that not many people really know. Like Izzy Stradlin, speaking of Guns N' Roses, Izzy Stradlin. I'd love to be do a cover band and just play Izzy Stradlin songs that he's done. You know, he's put out six, seven albums since he's been out of Guns N' Roses. Maybe more. They're all badass. Every one of them, I hit play and listen all the way to the end. His guitars, it's just, it's just, just right. 
simple. The dude's a badass, and he was the, you know, the root. There are rumors that with the Guns N' Roses three fifth reunion, that now here in 2019 uh, they'll be recording new music and. Many people believe that Steven Adler will be involved, and many people believe that Izzy will be involved. That would be so lovely. You can only imagine how good the songs will be. Oh, I'm sorry, I got stuck waiting. <laughs> Daydream Wait. Or Junkyard. I think I said in the first hour, the kickoff hour of the Waning Interest podcast. I think I said then that my basically my favorite band would be, I mean, when it comes to popular bands, it's Guns N' Roses and The Doors. But when it comes to all-time favorite band where it's just never got, you know, it, it, because it didn't get big at all, they never got big, Junkyard. I love Junkyard. Basically a poor man's Guns N' Roses. That's what I call them. Never got bloated. Even though they were kind of like Guns N' Roses with a long break, sort of. And they don't have all the original members. But I just love their fucking songs. So, I say that, I put that out into the world from this smallest click on the internet. Just need a drummer, bass player, and a couple of guitar players. Shouldn't be difficult, right? Maybe, just maybe, if you give me time and, and uh, patience, I could also play bass. And maybe some drums. That'd be cool, too. That's always been a an idea that'd be a cool thing to do as a band is every rotate a good enough band where everybody plays plays every instrument and rotate that's a badass idea I'm sure somebody's done it but I've never seen it I want to did I tell you patreon.com forward slash waning interest <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That was just for me. So I'm trying to lock down a date in June at the dojo for the comedy show that I'm producing. My first. Been working on a little video, a little promo video for it. For that should help with promotion that uh, it's a little different than your normal comedy promotion that you'll see. Longer than normal, more than normal, but I, I don't know. It's at its rough cut stage right now. And hoping when I do finally get that date that the, uh, that the four comics that I want are available for the date that I... Yeah, we'll figure it out. The wait is starting to piss me off, though, if this person that is listening and that I'm waiting to hear back, if they're listening, dude, or, hey, lady, what the fuck? I don't want to give it away. <laughs> Give what away? Dude, what are you even talking about? What are you, stoned or something? Yeah, so. You know what I found out today? It was pretty cool. Because I used to do Jim Carrey on the radio. I used to, well, I used to do Ace Ventura. Or, jokingly, do Ace, but be calling it Jim as a guest on somebody's radio, people's radio show. So I was always, a long time... Jim Carrey fan. 
I just realized today that his grandchild, his grandchild's middle name is the same as my daughter's. I thought that was pretty badass. Because my daughter does the same thing. I think. Goes by that name. I don't know if his grandchild goes by his middle name, but I was just kind of surprised that uh, that name is the middle name of any child in his... I don't know. I just thought that was pretty wild. How many times have I said simulation on this podcast? Seriously, have you counted? Because you know what? I haven't either. It's been a good handful. But there's another example of why I lean that way. Simulation or what's that? What's the phrase? Uh, what do they call it? Son of a bitch. No, that's not it. Hol hol not hologram, but uh, something kind of like Star Trek-ish. I can't remember, but whatever. We'll just stick with simulation, you fuckwit. Okay, thanks. Right on. Ladies and gentlemen, it is 21 minutes and 57 seconds past the hour, and that means it's time for the Wednesday joke. That's where I would have inserted music if I wanted to, but I don't because I thought the dead air was a little bit funnier because it leaves somebody expecting something rather than you get it. So the Wednesday joke... They're either jokes that I either just maybe jotted down and never used or haven't used in forever. Good or bad, I'm not saying. I'm just including it as a funny, fun little bit uh, for the podcast every Wednesday here on the Waiting Interest Podcast. iTunes. Stitcher, TuneIn, Google Play, Laughable. I already said that. Why did I just give all them a plug for free? I don't know. But because I did that, that's why I have the Patreon page. Patreon.com forward slash waning. Did I say slash? Slot? What? Yeah, what? Patreon.com forward slash waning interest. Waning with a Y. Wednesday joke. I am part Native American, the Abnaki tribe, and what's twisted is the name Wayne actually means wagon driver. So when we played Cowboys and Indians as kids, I just made it easy on everyone and attacked myself. I didn't hear the... the drums. Or I figured because it's... Uh, that was... Because I decided on a one-liner like that, I figured, why not have another? Because the other ones that I've told have been a little bit longer. I'm trying to remember the first one. I know I told the French teacher one. What did I, which one was last week? Horrible, man. 
My memory is awful. I blame the weed. As you should. You know, as we go on, you know, <clears throat> years ago it was like uh, thinking about people with Alzheimer's and, and you know, or, or amnesia or whatever, and like, oh, my God, how scary that would be to lose your memory or whatever. I'm like, pfft get to be a certain age and you're like you pray for it that's not the joke by the way that was just a little aside that was absolutely pointless and probably drove many people to hit the stop button so to those who didn't smoke them if you got them Okay, here's the second one. <clears throat> it's kind of crazy how uh, some people react and think I'm too harsh and honest when I talk about my mom until I tell them that she worked for the IRS. Then I get flowers. FYI, my favorite are peonies. However you pronounce it, I think they're pretty. And that was a double take of the Wednesday Joke of the Waning Interest podcast here on the Waning Interest Productions Network, whatever the fuck that means, because it doesn't really exist. I'm just making shit up as I go, and that's why this is such a success. Is it really? No. And that's why people like me, because of my honesty. So there you go. A couple of Wednesday Wednesday jokes. You you got a double shot. It's a double shot Wednesday here. On the Rock Station, 94.9 Zeta. That was the station I that was this when I still wanted to be a jock back in the early 90s. That's where I wanted to work. The Rock Station. 94.9 Zeta. South Florida's, what was it? South Florida's. They had a handful of different things. Oh, and then and at one point it was Zeta, they changed it to Zeta Rocks. And then we had, <clears throat> if, you live, if you live in California like me, uh, there's K-Rock, and they have the Weenie Roast. Well, uh, Zeta had Zeta Fest. And that's going to be one of the stories that I tell in the future when it comes to radio stories. There's a radio story coming up, but that's not the one I was going to tell today. Is it? No. Maybe next week. Note to self. Mark the tape, George. Thanks, Neil. But Zeta was, uh, what well, I mean, that's they're, they're part of the my whole beginnings of my radio career, because when I was listening to them, in the first place, they were a classic rock station, and they had a music-intensive morning show, and I said this on a previous hour, and I was driving all the way down to Kendall, this is in Miami, and I was driving all the way down to Kendall for on a painting uh, job. And I'm expecting Kimba to come on talking and to her news person and gabbing a little bit before playing another song at 6 a.m. And all of a sudden there's this, And now, coming to you live from the Rod and Rod Network Studios in Tampa, Florida, the Rod and Rod Show. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Is this a bit? Is this a commercial? What the hell is going on? I remember staring at my radio going, what the fuck? What's happening right now? That was 
my introduction to how quickly things can change in the radio business without warning, without promotion, just all of a sudden, bam. Luckily, Kimba didn't lose her gig, though. She just got moved to 6 to 10 p.m., which she was there in that time slot for a long time. I used to go hang out with her in the studio. It was cool. It was nice to see that different perspective. And that whole bang, bang of all these jocks that I'd listened to on the station for, you know, some time, and then meeting them all face-to-face, -face, one, you know, in succession going, not what I expected to see, not what I expected to see, not what I expected to see. Back in the days before, you know, you knew what jocks look like unless you went to a, uh, a promotion or just accidentally. You didn't, you didn't really know what radio people looked like back then. Unless they were really huge, like Casey Kasem or Howard Stern or Rick Dees. Back in the day, because you know, you got to remember, I know there's a lot of young folks listening to this, but you got to remember, you're listening to an old man. Can't you tell from the menthol cigarettes? Ninety four nine Zeta. That was Tom Petty running down a dream. <laughs> I could still get I, I still got it. You never had it. That's true. Here's something that hit me. Took a little while. It seems like I got it every hour, the last every, the last four hours of the podcast. I think I've spoken about Endgame. I've heard nobody out of all the movie stuff that I you know check out these little five minute things from Den of Nerds or Grace Randolph with uh, Beyond the Trailer or the guys from Collider, or, or Charlie from Emergency Awesome. I mean, there's a whole bunch. And they have the, you know, do these little breakdowns, little quick things. A lot of, th most stuff is about 10 minutes long. Not one of them. Nobody is talking about. And then you've got, the Russo brothers doing rounds of talking about because the spoiler ban has been lifted with the Spider-Man trailer coming out and now and, and people and answering a lot of questions, especially the timeline or whatever. Nobody's mentioning what, and maybe they're going to get into it with Spider-Man Homecoming or uh, Far From Home, sorry. Nobody is talking about how for five years everybody that wasn't snapped out of existence has sort of put things back together the best they can. And when you break that down, you've got sewage, food, you know, basic necessities of life, resources. And you have, as a group, you had no idea that any of these people were coming back, so you don't, you're not prepared for, for, if there's seven, say there's seven people, seven billion people on the planet, so three and a half got snapped. Now all of a sudden three and a half billion people come back after five years of rebuilding for only that three and a half billion that were still there. So now there's three and a half billion more fucking people and animals. The Avengers are the bad guys, man. 
They keep fucking shit up left and right. Now they've split these fucking timelines off, and Steve Rogers thinks he owns time and can just do whatever, and you know what? I feel like growing to be an old man. Well, fuck you, Steve Rogers. That's not what you were put here for, all right? Fuck you, you Hydra agent. That's going to be funny when I hear it back. Nobody's talking about that. Imagine where all of a sudden, in a heartbeat, you've got three and a half billion more fucking problems with sewage. In a heartbeat, you've got three and a half billion more problems when it comes to food. You know what I figured out? Movies are stupid. That's a lot of shit. That's a lot of piss. Porta potties lined up and down the freeways of the United States for years until they figured out oh my God, what do we do with this extra 3.5 billion people that just all of a sudden reappeared back in our lives? What the fuck? Not only do we have to uh, change all of our thinking when it comes to all the resources and all the ways to get rid of waste and, you know, all the basic things that a human group needs to do to make sure that they stay healthy and clean and, you know, not fucking absolute morons. So not only do we have to put up with figuring out how to integrate three and a half billion more people back into the fucking planet in an instant... But we also have to deal with the psychological effects of having to do that. And oh my God, would the fucking drug use go fucking through the roof like Superman? That's the calmest, coolest rant I've ever done. I think. There may have been others. But that one felt really good, didn't it? Didn't it? Did you? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I guess we'll see when I listen back. But uh, yeah, it felt really good. Did it feel good to you? I hope so. That's the plan. Well, you don't have to get all pissy. Sometimes you have to shake things up a little bit. Make sure people aren't falling asleep. Unless you're a yoga instructor. If I was a yoga instructor and somebody fell asleep in my my instructing room, I'd feel pretty proud. Okay, maybe embarrassed. It depends. It's a nuanced subject, just like all of them. Nothing's black and white, except for the colorblind. Somebody's listening to the blondie. I just heard a ooh ah, ooh ah. There's nothing like blondie after midnight. Hey. That could be the name of the cover band. Blondie After Midnight. Don't anybody go out there stealing it, you fuckers. You whips. Blondie After Midnight. That's a badass name for a band. Blondie After Midnight. Luckily, I'm recording, so I won't forget this. Mr. Roberts, uh, we are told that the only reason you do the podcast is so you don't forget anything. Is that correct? Uh, yes, that's absolutely correct. That way I don't have to write things down because I'm illiterate. So you just have to say, thank goodness for technology. 
That was douchey. Hey, man, I'm flying on the side of... Fly, with your... Hey, man, I'm flying by the seat of my pants. They call me to take Wayne. That's not true. They call me to take Wayneus. Blondie after midnight. Some people hear that and they'll th they think that it's a uh, chocolate chip brownie at 1 a.m. Some people will think the newspaper comic at 1 a.m. Some people will think Pamela Anderson at 12.01 a.m. Flying by the seat of my pants. I think you write down everything you say and you're reading all of it. Nope. If somebody really thought that, I would, again, be proud. Because that's not what I hear when I listen back. That's why one of the things I made a promo of when I made fun of my stuttering. That's one of the fun things to do is to make promos. You know, because it listened back to it after recording. <clears throat> you know, just, you got to make sure that uh, maybe the, I don't want to say that or whatever. So far, I've not edited anything out except for one name. But I didn't edit anything out. You know, I'd made a little, I made my own fun kind of bleep. I don't remember what uh, what hour that was. But I've never taken anything out. I've added things. But what was my fucking point? <clears throat> well, I listened back to make sure. And to make sure that... Was that entertaining? Was there enough laughs? What were the laughs per minute? But you got a whole hour, so, you know, I can't, what I, what I shoot for in a five to ten minute set, the bam, 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 you can't do that in the course of an hour all the time, unless you're Bill Burr. But, I still have to think that when I listen back going, yeah, is that worthy? I mean, is that an embarrassment? And if I'm putting it out without thinking it's embarrassing, then either I'm really fucking stupid and stoned or there's nothing to be embarrassed about. Except for always coming in second place. But anyway, listening back to it, if somebody thinks I'm reading, that's, that's awesome. That's really awesome. Write letters, if that's you, write letters to all the casting directors that you can come across on the internet. LA casting directors, uh, and write them a letter about the Waning Interest podcast and what an unbelievable job Wayne Roberts does on the podcast of reading his whole podcast and making it sound so confront uh, confrontational. <laughs> Conversational. See? Two takes. 
that I needed to reach out to you as a casting director just to let help help you let help you help let you know that Wayne Roberts exists and you should take a look at him for whatever reason. So you do that, even though I don't really care about gigs anymore. I'm too old for this. I'm just, I'm just so, I'm so sick of it all. But one of the big things I'm sick of is worrying about money. So if I didn't have to worry about money, then of course everything, but I don't want anybody to worry about money. So I'll never be, that's one reason why most of us never feel whole. It's because of the system we live in. And even though we get everything deep down, even though we don't realize it, the majority of us, 95% of us, uh, it doesn't, we still don't feel fulfilled because even though we have everything and don't have to worry anymore about uh, food and shelter, we know that so many people are. So we have a guilt, even though some of us may, aren't sure that it's even there. So I say, you can't buy me unless you're buying everybody. Why'd you have to go get so serious, Wayne? Because it's getting late and I need a fucking nap. Why'd you have to go get effeminate, Wayne? Because it's getting late and I need a nap. Why do you have to be so repetitive, Wayne? I need a nap. Nice job. That was a nice little curve you threw there. That's good. I thank Sanford Meisner. Now there's a name. There's a deep cut. For all of you wondering, who the fuck is Sanford Meisner? Sanford Meisner is uh, uh, known for the Meisner technique, which is an acting technique which is a lot of repetition and a lot of concentration on listening because real acting is listening, so you have an honest response. If the more you're listening, the more you're understanding uh, what's going on and the people, uh, your partner, your acting partners, uh, the more you are honestly react, which is really uh, acting, which is why it shouldn't be called acting in my head. To me, it should be called reacting because that's really what you're doing. You're living, trying, you're, you're living truthfully in imaginary circumstances. So, if you're going to live truthfully, that means you have to be, I mean, you can still not listen and live truthfully, but you're just, that's fuck up, that fucks up the scene. I remember, in, I remember in one acting scene, uh, in an, an exercise in class once, <laughs> I had a scene partner, and I'm not the greatest. I'm not saying anything. I'm not patting myself on the back or anything. Uh, but I do have a little bit more of a sense of what's going on and get it, you know? I don't know what it was with this kid. Sweet kid and everything, but there's one of the Meisner, one of the, one of the exercises is calling behavior with your partner. Like it's me and you. And we're there and we start by calling behavior where in the, in the acting teacher would to say, you go first. So if I go first and I'm looking at you <clears throat> and you have, you're, we're looking at each other and you just all of a sudden, and the first thing I notice is like maybe a shitty grin on your face. So I would say, you think this is funny. And right there, it would be the repetition, though, and then you would repeat. The, the, the exercise starts with just repeating. You would, then you would say, I think this is funny. No, you would repeat all the words, not just, you wouldn't change the words. So you would keep it. So if I said, you think this is funny, you would say, 
you think this is funny. And it just, it's, I know it sounds a little, it's, it's, it sounds, I'm making it sound a little more convoluted than it actually is. But you get the hang of it if you're paying attention really quick. It's, it's kind of fun for about 10 minutes and then it gets kind of annoying. But as you go, that's how you start. And as you go, then you get to, you get to change it up and then start calling behavior uh, a little bit more and you get, you can change it up. But that whole behavior thing, and then you get in trouble if you hadn't done that a lot, and then you start to notice those things. You go back out in the real world after a bunch of weeks of acting class, you, you're you a little bit of a different person because you notice things a bit more. If you're a complete asshole, you go around calling everybody's behavior. You know, <laughs> like me. That's a joke. Kind of. But you start to understand a little bit more, and that, and that, and, and that listening is the key. Because if you're not listening fully, then you're not truthfully part of the scene, 100%. And you're trying to live truthfully and you're trying to react truthfully and honestly. So you're not acting. You're reacting. I've never been comfortable calling myself an actor. It's always sounded weird to me. I've always, I've always changed it to reactor. Some people go, Pfft. but a lot of people go, yeah, that is kind of. That one definitely leans like 70-30 on the positive. If it's bad, it's acting. If it's good, it's reacting. That's the best way I could say it. That's fucking genius, man. Ladies and gentlemen, it's 52 past the hour, and that means it's time for Wednesday Radio Story on the Waning Interest Podcast here on the Waning Interest Podcast. This is a fun story. Going back to, it had to be 90, I'd have to, it's got to be 90, 98, 19, or no, yes. Or 97. 97, 98, whatever. Jesus Christ, Wayne. Get this shit together. Prepare more. Okay, fine. It's the early stages of my voiceover career. Where I had just become part of... Well, no. At this point, I don't think I was part of the... Yes, I was. Yes, I was. I was part of the production department. And it was after work, and we, we shared, when we were sold, we got sold, my, my, when I, I've told the story before in a different hour about uh, being, or flying over to, to Tampa to audition to be the Ron Ron, new Ron Ron producer. That was because we had gotten sold. And we moved out of that building where, I learned that news. And we moved into a building and we shared it with a marketing company. Uh, they were called Marketing Magic. So we shared their building with them. We had like one half, and that's where this one half of the building was where the studios were and most of the station stuff. Well, the, and, the, and Marketing Magic had two owners. One of them was a real wank. As soon as we moved into the building, he told Neil Rogers, who was the king of Miami radio for 30 years, that he could have his spot. The owner of the building said he could, that Neil could have his spot whenever he was working, whenever he was there in the building. And of course, blew that all to hell when Neil went to use it. <laughs> it was, so Neil would trash him on the air. The guy was a wank. Now, 
I'm in this. I'm in one of the studios with one of my coworkers, and I'm trying to re- voice. I'm recording my voice for something, and it's this. I think it was a thirty second piece, and I'm trying to get it down. And I'm used to recording by myself, but she was in the room because she needed to hurry up and get it. And we were. It was on that old tape, that old one inch tape or two inch tape. And I was trying to throw this stuff, this tag down for something. And I couldn't get it, and I, I think I was like on my sixth or seventh take. And all of a sudden, the door of the studio opens. And it's the one owner, the wank, wanker owner of, the, of, the, of Marketing Magic, who reneges on his parking space, showing somebody the building. Showing him around. Opens the door going, yeah, this is one of the studios. Right above his head is the red light that's obviously on that says on air. Outside of a studio, a red light goes on if any microphones go on or if any recording is going on. The guy just opened the fucking studio door. As I'm almost, I mean, I think that was a take that I was just about to get, finally actually get through and not have to edit and spend a lot of time on. And he goes, oh, sorry, are you guys recording? And I go, yep, that's what we're doing. That's why the light's on. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Wait for me. The door shuts. And I, and as soon as the door shut, I looked at her, just kind of jokingly, and I went, I want to go out there and break that fucking guy's neck. She laughs, and then we go on, and I finish recording. In that, I, when I said what I said, I had not stopped the tape. But I didn't realize until we got through the recording, we stopped and rewound it, and all of a sudden I hear myself go, I want to go out there and break that fucking guy's neck. Now... She hears it back and explodes in laughter all over again because she's thinking the same thing I'm thinking. One of the things that Neil Rogers was well known for was his drops. Like he had one with Mitch Lewis that said, Wrecked him? Hell, it damn near killed him. After a while, Neil just shortened it, would just use the wrecked him part wrecked them but there was tons of drops and whenever something something funny or whatever like that happened people like me and you know guys like me there was a bunch of us would do that we'd we'd find the tape we'd do it boom we'd give give neil a nice new drop and this was perfect because neil hated this guy for reneging on the parking space bullshit so he'd already trashed him anyway so Kim immediately goes, you have to cart that up, bleep out the fucking as little as possible, and you got to give that to Neil. Neil had it the next day on his desk. I put it right there as soon as the change was coming on in. I went over and I went, oh, here, let me just set this down for you and let you know that it's right there in the computer as well. He loved it and used it over and over and over. I used to use this people when I'd hear from people who were who listened to the station a lot, who were Neelys, I'd hear from them, or I'd I'd go into a bar, and uh, where there would be Neelys or whatever. I'd, I heard Neil play your drop. I want to go. Or I'd walk in. There was a, a couple of times I walk into places where, as soon as I walked in the door, it was kind of like, kind of like the norm thing from Cheers. Or I'd walk in and they'd hear three people go, I "Want to go in there? Go out there, break that fucking guy's neck." It was one of those early cool things I got to do on the air. And there you have the Wednesday radio story where I went out there to break that fucking guy's neck. So, watch Redacted Tonight, the Jimmy Dore Show, Kim Iverson, Abby Martin, The Covert Report, Tinfoil Hat, Look For Yourself, I'm Just Here To Be A Fun, Babbling Lecturer. Remember, we're all Neo, a.k.a. One. 
Sorry we ran long. Had to bump comedian Felicia Michaels. Thanks, Gary. Um, stay well. Stay well.